So again, this is going to cover interior elevations and how to draw them in Revit. I already have a floor plan here. Um, I'm in plan view. I'm going to go to view. And under the elevation dropdown, I'm just going to hit elevation. And then over here, you can choose between a building elevation and an interior elevation. So I'm going to set that to interior elevation. And when you mouse over your plan, it'll look to find a wall. So I'm going to choose uh, this wall here and then hit escape. Then selecting on that, I can check boxes for the other walls that I want to show as well in that interior elevation. So once I place these on a page, these uh, regions will populate and I'll see kind of what page it's on and the drawing number once uh, that's placed. So to get to this, um, I can double click on this and you'll notice that interior elevations show up here. Um, so the first thing we want to do is make sure the, the crop extents are what we want. So I'll notice just by default, this is this cabinet's being cut off. So I'm going to pull this over. I don't want to go too far over, right? Because now this is showing the door and, and kitchen beyond. Um, I'm going to extend this out just beyond this. And I'll show you in a second how I crop these. Um, pull this up just to show a little bit more. What I'm going to do is create a masking region to mask all of this out. But I just want to know of where everything is. Okay, that looks right. Um, I'm going to pull these levels over. I'm going to change this scale 1 to 25. This is, these are um, metric. Um, this project is overseas, but uh, I'm going to hide grade level. That doesn't really apply here. So I'm going to select this and um, I'm just going to right click, say hide in view elements. There's other ways to, to turn that off, but I'm going to use that method. Um, whenever you move um, a level in elevation, always make sure that it says 2D. Otherwise, if it's uh, 3D, um, when you move this, it's going to move it in other elevations as well. Imagine it's a kind of two-dimensional plane. Um, so when you move one side from the other view, it'll move that as well. So um, set this to 2D, and it'll only affect this view. And I can do the same thing here. I'm going to pull these over so that they have some breathing room. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is create this uh, masking region. It'll create kind of a picture frame and ensure that I have a solid line around the entire perimeter of this. Um, otherwise, Revit will sometimes, you know, accidentally crop uh, one of the lines. You want, you want this to have a full uh, perimeter line around it. So I'm going to go to Annotate. Under region, I'm going to go to masking region and I'm going to create two rectangles. One kind of out here, cropping everything, and then another one in here. And this first one is going to have uh, no line weight. So I'm going to make this invisible line type. This line type is going to be a heavy line type or a wide line. Okay, so when I hit that, um, it's going to give me um, kind of a, a white, basically white out around everything that I'm not interested in. Um, right? For an interior elevation, you don't need to show wall thickness or floor composition or you know, roof assembly. You're just showing the finishes of that interior. I'm also going to take dimensions here, so uh, DI, and I can strike dimensions from finished floor 
just tab until you find the actual object. And I'm going to dimension to the top of this cabinet and then top of the countertop here. And I've arranged these dimensions so that they show uh, the length in imperial and in metric simultaneously. Um, so depending on who's looking at it, it can easily be read. I'm going to continue this dimension string and I can click on it and if I want to just add uh, witness lines, I can click on this and it'll let me just add and add this way and then click here to finish it. Okay, so I have one continuous dimension string on the right and I can do the same thing for the bottom here. So just working from right to left each cabinet getting dimensioned. And this line won't show up. This is um, the crop region. So right now it says crop region visible. So if I uncheck that, you won't see it. But this will ensure that this has a, a heavy line for the perimeter of this interior elevation. Um, we've just dimensioned it. Um, another thing that you can do if you want to, let's say we, we print this and look at it and certain line weights are not showing up correctly, like let's say these cabinets are too heavy of a line weight, you can go to modify and then under line work you can click on that and this will override line weights. Um, you know here you can toggle uh, line weights to turn them on and off in your view. If you're working on something technical and you want to just worry about where the kind of border of your object is, you can click on this and work more precisely and then turn this back on when you want a preview of the line weight. So here under line work I can override the existing line weights. Like for example, let's say this is too heavy for, for my preference. I can set this to thin lines. Let me see. Let's try making one. And if for some reason the line weights uh, that are showing up here, the line types are not what you're looking for, you can go to manage additional settings and line styles. You can create your own um, line style here. So you'll notice that these are the, the line weights. So thin lines is set to one and it's black solid. So that's good. Um, that should be what we're looking for. Wide line is uh, five. So if you need something that's four, like you can create your own um, just by hitting new. So if we go to new, we'll call this um, medium heavy. And I'm going to set this to a four for the line weight. And hit OK. Okay, so now if I were to go to this, I can see that medium heavy is one of my options there. But I'm going to keep this at thin lines. You notice I can override this. I want these to be dashed. Um, so I'm going to leave those as is. And it looks like all of these are already set to thin lines. So I can't really affect that. But just for future reference, that's how to override a line weight or a line type. All right. So once this is ready to go, you can drop this onto a sheet. So I'm going to create uh, a new sheet. These were A1 metric. So metric, they use different sheet sizes. So I'm going to go to view, sheet, use this A1 metric and create 
all of my interior elevations. I'm going to drop these onto that. So you'll notice once I drop it onto a sheet, then if I go back to my floor plan, now that sheet number populates the call out and that number one shows up here. So that's the method for creating interior elevations and dropping them on a sheet.